Hey guys, James and Sierra Reviews here. Welcome to another cinematic bucket list. There are a lot of really well-known and famous directors out there whose works need to be given the bucket list treatment, and one of those is uh, anime director Hayao Miyazaki. The man has made so many visually interesting and creative works, and I have seen next to none of them. <laughs> and it's not for a lack of interest, and it's definitely not for a lack of accessibility. All of his movies are available on Max. Uh, Fathom Events does like a summer of Ghibli every year where they uh, re-release all of his movies and theaters for a limited time and everything like that so and it's one of those where I always want to you know like get into his work and watch his stuff but it's like I never know where to start because all of it just looks so good and interesting. Well, this year, two movies in his filmography are celebrating big anniversaries, so I figured what better place to start than there. Nausicaa Valley of the Wind, released in 1984, and Howl's Moving Castle, released in 2004. Again, very random and weird ones to pick, but since they're both celebrating uh, 40 years and 20 years respectively, I figured you know, it's better to start with those ones uh, than any of the other ones. But we'll start off with Nausicaa because it's the oldest of the two. Uh, this movie takes place in a war-torn apocalyptic future where the people of the Valley of the Wind are trying to restore uh, you know, peace and harmony between humanity and Earth. It's kind of in the same vein of something like Avatar, where it's, you know, a fantasy sort of sci-fi type movie with a pro-environmentalist message. But the only difference between this and Avatar is that this is a much better, more interesting movie. I did kind of appreciate that, like, yes, even though it does have, like, a very heavy lean on, like, a pro-environment message and everything, it's not, you know, a cut and dry, like, good versus evil type of story. I mean, it kind of is, but, you know, it, it's, you know, these two, these villages that are at war, and they're constantly, you know, meddling in nature to try and, like, fuck with each other. And, you know, like, you know, you have Nausicaa, who is, you know, really just trying to bring peace to all sides. Like, not just her village, but, you know, the village that they're at war with, on top of, you know, the you know, the jungle and nature and the, the, in, the giant insects and everything like that that they're using as, like, weapons, essentially. I did like the dynamic between, like, the characters. Like, I will admit there are kind of a lot of them, and it's easy to forget, like, you know, certain ones as they come and go throughout the movie, but I do kind of like the, di the dynamic between, like, the village people being kind of, like, hard-headed and war-hungry and Nausicaa being the one that has to like, you know, talk them down and be sort of the pacifist, but at the same time, she's not like, she is not afraid to fight if she absolutely has to, and she can kick a lot of ass when she really needs to. I thought visually the movie was absolutely stunning, like for something to come out in like the mid 80s, like, it still looks like it could be something that would be made today, like, it hasn't really aged all that much. I really like the colors, I really like the landscapes, the designs of like, you know, some of the insects and everything like that in the jungle and everything looks really cool and really pretty. And there are a lot of like cool looking uh, action bits when they're like flying around and you know fighting each other that looks really cool. I don't really have much to complain about with this movie. I mean I do feel like there were some parts that kind of dragged a bit but that could have just been me. And also I feel like, like I said, there were a lot of characters and like aspects that could have been developed on a little bit further, but beyond that, I thought this was a really solid movie, so I'd probably give it a 3.5 out of 5. Next up is Howl's Moving Castle. Uh, this is uh, based on the book of the same name, and it's about a young woman named Sophie who uh, has a curse put on her to turn her uh, really old and ugly, and so to get the curse lifted, she has to find uh, this magician uh, wizard named Howl, uh, and basically work for him to see if he can, you know, use his magic to help uh, change her back. Like I said, this is based on a book, and I do remember reading the book uh, in school, but I remember basically nothing about, about it aside from, like, sort of the bare bones, like, elements of the story, so I won't be able to say, like, how well this compares to the book and, and vice versa and everything like that. Taking the movie at face value, I thought it was alright. I don't think it was, like, great, but 
It was, you know, it was definitely visually interesting. It had a lot of creativity and imagination. Mm -hmm. The consistent thing with uh, Miyazaki is like just the design of all these worlds and all these things looks absolutely incredible and each one feels distinct even though they're done by the same guy. Like, I really like sort of the both like mechanical and organic sort of look of the moving castle itself. I like sort of, you know, the the interior of the of the castle and you know the different like rooms and the designs of the characters as well are all super memorable and cool looking and the baseline premise of the story is interesting but i feel like they try to like overload it with just too much like like on top of the issue with sophie and trying to get the curse lifted there's also like you know, a war going on, and Hal is like, has some sort of involvement in this war, and there's, you know, this, this woman who has like, a history with Hal who might be like, taking her, his power away, and trying to kill him, and like, the connections between every, and it's, it tries to throw a lot at you, and it doesn't really do a good job of explaining, like, you know, the history behind all this stuff and like w what their connection to everything is and like how all this stuff happened. Like, it's a similar thing, it's a similar issue I kind of had with Boy and the Heron, even though I liked that movie, is like, it's a lot of interesting ideas and a lot of really interesting visuals, but there are a lot of aspects and a lot of like decisions uh, in the story that aren't really like all that well explained or conveyed and it just kind of like, detracts from the story and like kind of makes it a little weak if I'm being honest. But they don't really have a whole lot to them beyond like the bare basics. And again, I don't know how much of the issues that I'm having are something that are explained in the book, um, but yeah, it definitely kind of made the movie a little weaker and harder to follow in certain areas. Like I said, the movie isn't bad, like there's just... Like I said, the movie isn't bad. Like the visuals are absolutely stunning and it's kind of it's kind of fair to compare this to Boy and the Heron cuz they both feel very like ethereal and almost kind of like a a bedtime story rather than like an actual like narrative even though they do have narrative like structure to them. But there's just a lot of aspects to the movie that I feel like could have been reworked or like developed on or explained a little bit better. Uh, to where like it was a little bit like easier to follow but as is I thought the movie was all right and it was definitely very visually pretty so I'd still recommend checking it out if you're curious but I'd give it a three out of five. But anyway, that does it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of either of these Miyazaki movies. Uh, which one do you like more? Which one do you like least? And what's your favorite Miyazaki movie that you've seen? Which one should I cover next for the bucket list? Let me know that stuff down below. I've got more videos coming real soon, but until then, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date when I'm posting. Follow me on my social media, subscribe to my main channel. Everything you need to know will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.